Hi there guys and welcome to another video. Now I'm sure you've all heard of Home Assistant, so I'm really excited to introduce to you my new container, Home Assistant in a Box. Now there's a lot of different ways you can install and use Home Assistant, from installing it on dedicated hardware such as a spare PC or a Raspberry Pi, or if you've got a home server such as us Unraiders, well we can install it on our Unraid server as well. On our servers there's really two ways we can install Home Assistant. We can install Home Assistant in Docker as a container, but unfortunately going that route we often have to install a lot of other containers, link them all up and the complexity gets quite large. But we can also install the Home Assistant operating system also known as HasOS. Now this really simplifies setting up your Home Assistant and configuring it and any guides you see online really telling you how to configure Home Assistant will probably expect you're running HasOS. So you might be wondering what exactly is Home Assistant in a box? Well, it's my latest container in the in a box series, which is a Docker container which actually installs a VM onto your Unraid server. And the idea of these containers is to make it as easy as possible for the end user to be up and running in as short a time as possible. And Home Assistant in a box, it has actually three different functions. So the first function obviously is it goes to the Home Assistant download page for Linux and it downloads the KVM QCOW2 image by scraping this page so it always gets the latest version. After that it extracts that VDisk, puts it in the right place, creates your VM, gives it a nice icon, configures everything for you and starts it up. So that's just the first thing that Home Assistant in a box does. It creates your VM. But also, normally in Home Assistant, when you're running a VM, we'd open a VNC window and here we'd need to identify the IP address that's been assigned to the Home Assistant VM. And so to access it, we'd have to go to its IP with the port 8123. And that would bring us straight into Home Assistant. Now you might find that a bit of a hassle to actually have to put the IP address and port number into the browser. Of course, you could just add a bookmark to the browser so you don't have to, or even a custom tab to the Unraid's GUI. Now, originally, when I first started using Home Assistant, I was running it in Docker. Now, there's one thing I actually missed about that is the fact that, well, on every Docker container in Unraid, we can go to the Docker tab, click on the icon of the container and open its web UI by, well, clicking on web UI. So I thought to myself it would be really cool if Home Assistant in a box could actually, when you click on its web UI, redirect through to the actual web UI of the running Home Assistant VM. So that's exactly what the container can do. It has a web server inside of it, which can redirect to the IP address of the Home Assistant VM. And for those of you who are wondering how it knows the actual IP address of the container, well, it uses the QMU guest agent to query that, and then it can update that in the Nginx config file so we can always get through to the Home Assistant VM's web UI. Okay, so the third and final thing that the container can actually do is it actually checks whether Home Assistant is running. Because there's nothing worse than if you've got a Home Assistant VM and for some reason it crashes and your automations around the house aren't working. So I'm just stopping this VM to simulate it crashing. And so now if we go back across to the Docker tab and we have a look at the logs of Home Assistant in a box here, we'll be able to see what it's up to. Now we can see at the bottom here, it says it's waiting for two minutes before checking again to ensure the VM's still running. Now we can choose how many minutes it waits in between checks. Just for this video to make it quick, I set it to two minutes. But the default, as you'll see in a moment when we actually go through the install process, well, that's set for 15. Okay, so the container's seen that the VM's not running and is just starting it up. So let's close this and go back across to the VMs tab and we should see the VMs running. And of course, if we go back to the Docker tab and we click on the web UI, well, we're straight into Home Assistant's GUI. So if you want to run Home Assistant on your Unraid server, then Home Assistant in a box is probably the easiest way. Okay, so let's go through and get the install done. 
Here I am on my server Serenity here. And if I go across here onto the Docker tab, you can see I've actually removed the container from here. And of course, I've removed the Home Assistant VM. Now, before installing Home Assistant in a box, there's a couple of prerequisites that we have to actually make sure are OK. Now, firstly, yeah, it seems pretty obvious, but you must have the Unraid VM service running. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to install a VM. The next thing to enable is notifications. Now, the container can send through GUI notifications when it's doing its install. So it's best to have this set to detailed and we need the Docker update notifications just set to anything other than never. So with that done, click done. So with that done, we can now go ahead and click on apps to get to the apps tab and install a container. So do a search for home assistant or home assistant in a box, then click on the install button to install the template for the container. Now you'll see a little pop up here, giving a bit of a warning saying that the template is set to run as privileged. Now, this is perfectly normal and it's necessary for this container, obviously, because it's interacting with the server installing a VM. So just click on to OK. And at the top here, there's just some brief information about the container. And if we scroll down here, here we can put in the name of the VM. Just change this if you don't want it to be called Home Assistant. Now, this Home Assistant URL here, leave this as it is. This is just the URL which the container will scrape to find the actual download link. So here under VM images location, just set that to wherever you store your VM images. For most of us, that's going to be the domain share. And here is our app data location. Now here under keep VM running, we can see this is either set to yes or no. So if you want to have the container check that the VM is actually running and keep it running, well, just set this to yes. If you don't want to do that, then set it to no. I want mine set to yes. Then here under check time, this is in minutes for how often you want the container to check if the VM is running. Personally, I think 15 minutes is probably fine. And here is the web port that the container uses. OK, so all I'm going to do now is click apply and pull down the container. Now the container will give us notifications through the GUI, but I'm also going to look at the logs here just so we can see what it's doing. So at the moment, it's just downloaded the QCAL2 dot xz file and it's now extracting it and it's going to move it to the domain share right so the notification says the vm has successfully completed and it can now be run so what the container does now is it uses the guest agent to check what the ip is it will take a few times for the guest agent to be running and when it detects it is running it's going to grab the ip okay so now it's got the ip address 10.10.20.136 so now that means that we can access the gui through the container. OK, so let's close the log and go here and click on to Web UI. And so here we are into the Home Assistant VM. And of course, if we go across to the VMs tab, we can see the Home Assistant VM running here. OK, so I'm going to jump back across here and go back to Home Assistant's Web UI. And here we can just follow through a wizard. Here we'd select our location. And then here we just select the country we're in so it knows the right kind of measurements, whether it's miles, kilometers, that kind of thing. So often when you first start everything up, it'll be looking on the network and it can see some various smart home things that you might have. So you just click on to finish and this brings you through to your first Home Assistant dashboard. Now I'm not going into anything in to do with setting up Home Assistant. I might do some videos in the future if you guys really want me to. Now, if this video gets enough likes, then I'll know you guys are interested in Home Assistant and I'll make some videos about setting various things up. But on a bit of a side note, I recently had a really interesting interview with Josh Kellaway from IM Systems over in Australia. Now, his company, they deploy Unraid servers as home automation machines running Home Assistant. So you might be interested in checking out that interview on the Uncast show. But before we wrap this video up, I just want to show you a couple of things. Now, the first thing here is if I stop this VM and I want to delete it, if I click on remove VM here. Now, you might have noticed then that when I remove the VM, I chose to keep the VDisks. The reason being is because I'm going to go back across to the Docker tab now and I'm going to restart the Home Assistant in a box container. And here the notification says VM setup successfully completed. And if we look at the VMs tab, yep, we can see that the VM is there. 
But what the container does do is it checks if there are any existing VDisks that are present, and if there are, it won't re-download another VM. It will just recreate the XML so the VM can run. Of course, we can see this isn't a new VM because there's no install wizard, but we can log in with our credentials that we set up earlier. So what I'm saying is, is basically there's no problem rerunning the container. It won't ever delete a VM that you've already got. Now, before we go ahead and wrap this video up, just a couple of other tips is remember that this container, if you have it set to keep the VM running, well, if you want to stop the VM, well, it's obviously a good idea to stop this container as well. If you don't do this, then obviously the container, if it checks whether the VM's running and it isn't, it can start it back up again. So if you want to shut down the container and that variable set, then make sure to shut down both the container and the VM. And once the Home Assistant VM is installed, just like any other VM, you can come in here and make any changes you want to the template. There's no special XML for the Home Assistant VM. Nothing fancy like that. By default, it has two cores and two gigs of RAM. This is the recommended specification on the Home Assistant website. But of course, if you need more resources, you can just change this here. And obviously, if you ever wanted to pass through any USB devices, you might have a Zigbee stick or a Z-Wave stick. Well, you could just add it in here or even pass through a whole USB controller. Now, another thing about having the container be able to start the VM is it means you don't actually have to start it from the VM manager. Of course, there's no reason why you shouldn't. But if you go across to the Docker tab and just start the container, well, because the variable is set to check when the container is running, it will automatically check if the VM is running as soon as the container starts and start up the VM as a result. So as well, if you have the Docker container to auto start, when your on RAID server starts up or restarts, well, the Docker container is going to start and in turn, that's going to start up the VM as well. Okay, guys, well, I don't really want this video being too long, so I think we'll wrap it up there. Now, I really hope you find this video useful and you enjoy using the container. If you do, then please give it a like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, I want to give a really big thank you to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much, guys, for all of your support. It's you guys that make these videos possible. So thank you so much for your support. Anyway, it's getting late here and I think it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good. And I'll catch you in the next video.